Hey everybody, welcome to another installment of Shop Talk. As always, I'm Michael Stoops, and today we want to talk to you about a couple of really exciting products that also put a little bit of a spin on what we generally talk about with regards to the use of SMAT abrasive products, right? The um, super micro abrasive technology that we have in products like M105, M100, uh, and M205. Well, we have that SMAT abrasive in the couple of products that we're going to be talking about today, but we've played around a little bit, well, quite a bit actually, with the chemistry of these products and um, their interaction with you is quite a bit different. So we're talking about much longer buffing cycles. We're talking about a dramatic reduction in dusting. In fact, virtually no dust at all and a super easy wipe off to where we virtually eliminated any sticking of product to certain types of paints because we, we tend to be seeing more and more of that um, as uh, paint technology seems to keep progressing. You know, we're seeing a lot more um, really touch sensitive paints that haze really easily. We're seeing more sticky paints out there. So we wanted to see what we could do to address some of these things and make your lives a little bit easier when it comes to polishing paint. We're talking specifically about M200 and M300. And let's dive into M200 to get started. Uh, this is really, really a fantastic finishing polish. M200 Pro Speed Polish, one of the first products that we have in our new packaging for the, the Meguiar's Professional line. And what this is, is a finishing polish, similar to M205, but with this kind of new formulation and new technology that we've developed. This works great whether you're working with a tall stroke or a short stroke DA, or if you're working with a rotary, if that's your preference, M200 is great all around with that. Excellent cutting ability. So if you've been using something like M205 on microfiber on certain paints in certain circumstances to do a one-step correction, you can do that same thing with M200. But since it is a finishing polish, very common use is going to be as a follow-up to a compounding step. So M200 quite often will fit into this, what can be a fairly involved process of a full paint correction prior to the application of a coating, or if you prefer something like um, our um, Hybrid Pro ceramic sealant, the M27, you're going to get a great finish and a really fantastic user experience with the M200. If you're one of those that's really into jeweling the paint, you like a nice long buffing cycle with a soft finishing foam pad, M200 works beautifully for that. If you still kind of like to get in and get out quickly, well, do your test spot and see what's really the optimum pad choice, tool speed, arm speed, pressure, and all those things, which we hope you're doing anyways, regardless of what product you're doing, because it's the project that you're working on that dictates not only which product to use, but how to use that particular product. You probably will find in some cases on those really super sensitive paints that, that haze really badly and you struggle with the haze, even with finishing, that our M210 may still be the better choice for you, but if the paint is not that sensitive, M200 can work really, really well. Again, either as a follow-up, whether you've cut with a rotary or you've cut with a DA, or whether you finish with a rotary or finish with a DA using M200. Uh, that test spot's always gonna tell you the best way to approach that project. So with all that said, let's take a look at what we can actually accomplish with M200 when we're looking at those two different types of issues, whether it's a secondary step, a follow-up to your compounding, or if you're going to use it as a standalone, kind of one-step correction when the budget maybe isn't there for a multi-step correction, or this is not what the client's looking for, or perhaps not what you're looking for. Maybe the paint's not that bad, so it doesn't need an aggressive approach. We can use M200 both ways. Let's go take a look at how that works for you. So as we've discussed, M200 has that versatility to where we can use it as part of a larger project where you're doing um, a complete paint correction, you've done the iron decon, you're doing all of those things, and perhaps you've got some hazing or some other um, kind of secondary defects that have been created by the compounding step. And that's where your polish step normally comes into play with a foam polishing or finishing pad, depending on what your test spot told you was the correct process to use on that particular paint. Um, so we've got those issues with 
haze here from, uh, from a compounding step. But then 200 can also be used uh, as almost a standalone corrective product, depending on, again, like we talked about, your goals, how bad the paint is, how good you're trying to get it to be. Uh, so we've got part of this here where the paint's glossy, but it just has swirl marks in it. So let's address that haze from a compounding step first. Uh, and, and sometimes that haze is pretty bad and sometimes it's not that bad. And you just wanna really refine out that finish. In a case where the haze is really not bad, or maybe you don't have any haze at all because it was fairly hard paint, um, you might opt for a black foam finishing pad with the M200. But in a situation like this where we have as much haze as we do, we're gonna step up a little bit in aggressiveness and go with the yellow foam finishing pad. And we'll just address half of this haze to show you uh, kind of a before and after of what we get using M200. Now we talked a little bit about the long buffing cycles that you can get with M200. And wanna make sure that we can demonstrate that for you here because this will stay wet for a very long period of time, which again, if you're really into jeweling the paint, this is probably gonna be more with that foam finishing pad. Well, if that's what you're into, M200 works great for that. But if all you're really looking to do is correct that haze, when you're not jeweling, sometimes you can get it done pretty quickly. Other times, if you start off with a bit more pressure and then ease up on your pressure as you finish off, that might even get you a better finish overall. Again, your test spot is going to really tell you the best way to address the particular paint that you're working on in that particular moment. But as you can see, this is staying very wet. There's like no dust to speak of. And we can just keep buffing and buffing and buffing and not have this dry out on us. And I'm running this just under speed four. So we're not getting the paint even close to being hot, which as we discussed earlier is something you wanna make sure that you do is maintain as cool a temperature to the paint. Keep that pad from skipping. And if you're working on fresh paint, it helps to avoid that kind of premature solvent pop that you can get from overheating the paint. And of course, that wipe off, super easy, even after that nice long buffing cycle. And when you look at the difference, without even giving it an awful lot of work, from the haze that we started with to where we're at now, if you wanna hit it again with black foam, if you think you're gonna get better, if it can actually Take it up a notch from there, but that's looking pretty darn fantastic above and beyond that, uh, that terrible haze <clears throat> that showed up from the compounding step. Again, your test spot is really gonna tell you exactly what pads you need to use, how long you need to buff, and all those things. That's why we do test spots. It's not just for the initial defect removal. It's to get to the end goal that you're looking for. And in this case, M200 does a fabulous job getting rid of that, um, that haze from the DA or a rotary swirl if you're using a rotary. And again, if you're going to finish with a rotary with M200, go nice and slow with that speed. Keep that pad nice and flat to the paint. Now let's take a look at what 200 can do if we're using it as kind of a standalone correction when maybe your target isn't quite that high and you just need to remove some swirl marks. Perhaps you got a customer that's on a little bit more of a budget and they're not gonna pay for a multi-step correction. Or maybe the paint's just not that bad to begin with, so why hit it with a more aggressive compound? Um, so let's step into that and see what we can do. Now, in those situations where the plan is to use M200 as a standalone cutting product, 
uh, because again, either the paint's not that bad or the, the budget just isn't there for a multi-step paint correction. Uh, your test spot, again, is going to tell you which is the correct pad to use for that particular project, but there's a pretty good chance that you may want to step up to a foam cutting pad or perhaps even a microfiber cutting pad, uh, depending on how the paint responds to things, when all you're trying to do is remove those swirl marks from otherwise glossy paint like we have here. So much like we did with the haze, let's run the same M200, this time on a burgundy foam cutting pad to attack just the swirl marks and not any haze. <laughs> And again, even though we've switched pads and we're working on a different set of defects, we still get that nice, long, wet buffing cycle with M200 that allows you to spend the time that you need to get in there and remove all of those defects or remove them to your satisfaction without having the product dry out, without it sticking to the paint, and without it being difficult to wipe off when you're done. Still nice and wet. You don't need to start with a lot of product on the pad either. See, for as long as I've been going, and this is still wet, but again, that wipe off is just that quick and easy. And as far as the swirls go, well, they're pretty much gone compared to what we started with. So same product, two different situations, two different pads, and yet we've got a pretty spectacular finish in both cases. The versatility, the level of cut, the quality of finish with M200 is pretty spectacular all around, but always your test spot is going to tell you which is the correct pad, the right amount of pressure, tool speed, arm speed, all of those things that we've always talked about, uh, that we've, we've discussed in other videos. Those are the things that you determine with your test spot to find out what's the right combination for the paint that you're working on today. But M200, with its versatility, seems to do a fabulous job across the board in the vast majority of cases. We think you're really gonna love working with M200. Now, if you're using M200 as your final prep step before laying down a full coating, obviously you need to do um, a panel wipe, something like our M122. Make sure that you're getting all of those compound and polish oil residues and anything else off of that paint so that it's completely stripped back. And this gives us the opportunity to uh, show you once again even after stripping anything off of there, that we've gone from the swirls to nice, clean, beautiful looking paint. Uh, we're not leaving any fillers behind with M200. We are correcting problems with the paint. All right, so now that we've shown you what you can do with the M200 Pro Speed Polish, whether it's that second step in a multi-step uh, to remove rotary swirl, DA haze, what have you, um, or as a one-step correction, 
what if you're not doing a full multi-step correction? What if you are not looking at doing a ceramic coating? Um, what if all you need is an all-in-one? Well, that's where M300 Solo All-in-One comes into our discussion today. This is, again, utilizing this newest generation and formulation with our SMAT abrasive technology, but putting it into an all-in-one product that now is leaving behind that SiO2 or that hybrid ceramic paint protection when everything is said and done. Um, all-in-one, what does that really mean? Well, basically it means it's a cleaner wax, but it's a cleaner wax that's really elevated in not only cut, but in user experience all around. We have the same kind of very, very long buffing cycle that we talked about with M200. You can use M300, again, with a DA, tall stroke, short stroke. You can do it with a rotary. Um, we recommend if you're gonna work with a rotary that at the end, you probably slow that tool way down to 600 to 800 RPM. Keep that pad really flat so that you're not inflicting any even fine rotary swirls or holograms. But if you're working with a DA, do your test spot, because again, we keep harping on this, but test spot is gonna tell you, even with M300, which pad to use, what tool speed to use, all of these different variables. If you want more information on test spots, we've got a shop talk video on that very subject here on our YouTube channel. Go check it out and then come back and give M300 a shot. If you're working on paint that's in pretty good condition to begin with, maybe all you need is a yellow foam polishing pad and a couple of passes and you're good to go. You might need a cutting pad of some sort, whether that's foam or microfiber, and perhaps work it a little bit longer. It depends on how hard the paint is, how bad the defects are, and what your target is. But what you're going to get is that nice long buffing cycle. Again, if you're really into jeweling the paint, I know with an all-in-one that might almost sound a little crazy, but if you can slow down and spend a little bit more time buffing under those circumstances, if the paint likes it that way, you can get a phenomenal finish with this product in one go. Um, because it is technically a cleaner wax, you can work a section, wipe off and see where you're at, or you can go and correct the entire vehicle and then come back and wipe off the residue when you're done. What you're going to find is either way, that wipe off is incredibly easy to work with, virtually no dust, and the level of finish that you can get with this is pretty darn surprising for an all-in-one. And best of all, probably, you get that fantastic SiO2 protection when everything is said and done. You do not need to follow it up with any other product. Uh, maintain it with a hybrid ceramic spray detailer or even M799, and you'll really prolong that SiO2 protection. But you'll get that fantastic water beading, that almost self-cleaning characteristic of the car. It makes subsequent washes a whole lot easier to work with. So give this a shot. I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. In fact, let's go see what we can do with this back on that panel and um, get rid of some pretty nasty looking swirls in that same paint, which by the way, is a little bit touch sensitive and doesn't really like to be played with too much. Let's see what we can do with M300 Solo All-in-One. Take a look at this. Now, as mentioned, um, D300 Solo is essentially a cleaner wax, which means it cuts, it polishes, and it protects all in one go. And of course, this time with, uh, with M300, it is uh, an SiO2-based uh, protection, so it's kind of that hybrid ceramic, so it's really good, long-lasting protection. But what we really want to talk about here right now is its cutting ability. And again, your test spot, I know we keep harping on this, but test spots are, are critically important when you're working on paint to figure out what's the most effective way to do things. Your test spot is gonna tell you whether you need the cut of a polishing pad or a foam cutting pad, or if you even need to step up to uh, a microfiber finishing or cutting pad. And then what's the quality of finish that you get overall? Ideally, you wanna pick the pad that's gonna do this literally in one step so that you are maximizing M300 Solo's one-step abilities. Uh, we've already done some experimentation here, so we know that this yellow foam pad will give us what we're looking for. And again, the long buffing cycle that we get with M300 means that we can continue to cut as we continue to buff 
and we've selected a pad that's not scouring the paint at the same time so we can maximize the cut and the finish and even if you have to buff a little bit longer you're still working slow to work quickly that means you take a little bit more time to do it once and do it right the first time you don't have to go back and do things over again slow down to work faster an M300 allows you to do that because it will stay wet for a good long time and again if you're into jeweling the paint it works great for those of you that like working that way Again, quick and easy wipe off, but to go from that level of swirls to this level of finish and get the SiO2 protection all in one go. And again, because it's cleaner wax, uh, you can either work a section and wipe off or you could work your way around the car very methodically so you're getting uniform cut and then come back and wipe off whatever residues there uh, when you're done with the entire project. But for one step and the quality of protection that you're getting, that level of correction, this is pretty fun stuff. I think you're really gonna enjoy M300. All right, so there you have M300 Solo All-in-One. Those projects that you might have where that's really all you need is a one step M300. I think you're gonna find it to be a fantastic addition to your arsenal. Along with M200, both of them are going to give you those really long buffing cycles. If you're into jeweling paint, both of them work really, really well for that, but you don't have to. Uh, tool choice, pad choice, do your test spots, but we think you're really, really going to enjoy using both of those products. So thanks again for joining in on this installment of Shop Talk. I uh, hope to catch you on the next one. And you know we're out there on social media channels all over the place. You know where to get a hold of us. Um, our phone number's on the back of every bottle of product we make. You can get in touch with the guys uh, there in our um, solutions hub. Otherwise, check out the forum, mcguiresonline.com, or ask questions down here in the comments if you have questions on these or any other products in our lineup. Appreciate having you uh, sit in on this one, and we'll see you again next time. Stay shiny, everybody.